With that, I go ahead and in a message now going. Uh, I caught him with scripture you picked. <clears throat> and the scripture, what? Um, Pashtin Zan in the Bible, but we're going to go to John 18, uh, verse 29. Do we have a. Do we have a what? Pafarj lesen and I want to know understand going. Let's see if this fits our life, if our life lines up with the Jews. And it has, it is what the Jews died in. And in verse 29, Pilate then went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? The Jews that died in Jesus accusing. <clears throat> Oh, but there was no solid evidence of this. There was no evidence of this at all. So they accused him. And in verse uh, 30, there they say, They answered and said to him, If he were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him up to you. So they called Jesus an evildoer because they couldn't agree what Jesus did. They were in God's gain, Gegen Jesus, they uh, schaffen bloß gegen uns. They will nicht mit den Taub schaffen, because they could the truth nicht handeln. They could not handle the truth because Jesus would point that out very clearly to him, to them. And then, uh, and then in verse 31, it says, Then Pilate said to them, You take him and judge him according to your law. So, he's a pilot, well, the Nushmeta Donan. Pilate was a free man from all of this, in my understanding. I will Nushmeta Donan. I don't so, that's a Jena Sachen, would him the Jeder nicht reichen. Oba, Oba, they will Pilate dot bring. And in verse 31, that's where the answer is. And then Pilate said to them, you take him and judge him according. Nee, this is 31. Then Pilate said to them, You take him and judge him according to your law. And, uh, and then they say, Therefore the Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. So in their belief, they did not find it lawful if we put somebody to death. So now, they have decided that we just going to accuse him, we're going to call him an evildoer, and then we're going to push it in somebody else's hand, and then they will kill him. And he will, and through him, they'll kill him. And then they, they believe they can wash their hands and, and be free from this. We did not kill him. He did. So, as I was studying at this this week, this is what came to my mind. Accusation. Uh, how, how do we accuse other people? Are we from the Jews or are we not? How often do we say, yeah, that person so and so, and, and maybe add another word or two to it to just really make him look bad? And that accusing him. <clears throat> I wish we could all be free from that. And let's go to um, to uh, Revelations twelve ten. In Revelations twelve ten, it says like this: and Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren, who accuses them before our God day and night, has been cast down. So here, if you read this and try to understand it, here is Satan. He is before God accusing us all the time, day and night. That is what he does. And if we accuse, we, 
we practice this accusing thing against somebody else, who are we having a relationship with? Is it God or is it the accuser that stands before God and accuses us? In a, if we accuse somebody, we are guilty. We are to repent from it. And then we go to Jude. Uh, Jude, Jude verse, verse 9. There it says, get the Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body, the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuked thee. This is the archangel, if I understand it right, the archangel would not even accuse Satan. He would, he would not even accuse him, but he told him flat out, but said, the Lord rebuked thee. It is the Lord's job to judge this. We are not to accuse or things like that. So th this is what was on my, through this week, it was on my, on my heart to bring that out. Who are we? Are we like the Jews? Or are we the ones that try to feel with somebody else and actually help them? If you build the body of Christ, we have to encourage one another not to do those things. We might not um, take accountable. We might not have this, and then we have to stand solid, and then we need to remind them, okay, hey, this does not line up. We need to change that. Or this does not line up. We need to change that. That's on the surely cat. When we got in the king as an, we were we might not dot eating, we were not dot eating because we were on and jeder Mensch who we met in Verbungsan. We we uh, we were all on the past in a fun under it. I quite dot fun me out. I can feel more surely cat was on dot. But we are to repent of that. And uh, I want to encourage all of us. Let's listen how one or the other speaks. And I would issue to me adults that in, and on the uh, day and order home. So that we can practice the love of God. That we can live on um, encouraging to follow, to follow the Lord. With that, um, I want to go into a prayer and I'm like the day of the song ladies. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful morning. Thank you for always being with us. Thank you for always reminding us that we are to turn from wicked ways, Lord. I want to thank you for that because the Holy Spirit is willing to dwell in us and is willing to keep us clean and to and through Jesus we can be washed and be free from all of this. Lord, I pray also the, for Frank as he's going to bring the message. Give him courage. And give him a, an open and free will to speak openly from the heart and so that people feel that the message comes from an open and free heart. Lord, I pray that you will strengthen him and also the surrounding churches, wherever your word is spread, may the truth live. May you bring that to their attention and maybe there is somebody somewhere in church that has not heard of the truth and will learn it today. Lord, we pray for that person that he can accept it and go on with it. Lord, I also want to thank you for the wonderful rain. May you, uh, may you continue to give that for our area here has been so dry. And Lord, and we want to thank you for that. Lord, thank you for the congregation that have come out. I pray that... You, that you may bless them, and also for those that could not come out, Lord, be with them in spirit and in truth, Lord. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning to each one. I want to greet you in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. I uh, want to welcome each one. I'm glad you made the decision to come out this morning. I really appreciated the last song. Beautiful question. Are you washed in the blood? Um, I can say that I struggle to walk daily with the Lord. I can say that this morning. It's not an easy journey, but I can say that it is a very blessed journey to be able to come to the end of the day and realize that God walked with me, even though I sometimes didn't know how to walk with Him. So, thank you for that song. Um, I hope this morning, by the reading of the Word of God, uh, it would bring us into a deeper relationship with Christ. Um, I don't know how deep your relationship is or if you walk with Christ or have walked with him and then somewhere down the road you took a turn and you didn't walk with him anymore. Or maybe you've never walked with Christ. Maybe you never have. And I, I found it interesting by the song selection, the last one there, Are You Washed in the Blood? It, it, it brings us to a place to realize and Take a little evaluation of where am I at? What's going on in my life? Where am I at as far as the Christian walk? Um, and so, oftentimes, uh, we would, at the end of the service, give an invitation um, to invite people to Christ. And uh, for whatever reason, um, as God leads and guides, I actually chose this morning to give an invitation at the beginning. I don't exactly know why, but so God leads, so we walk, right? Amen? So I want to say this morning, um, for those of us that have never walked with Christ, God continually through the scriptures gives the invitation to walk with Him. And like I already said, it's uh, an invitation to come walk with Him. And when we walk with Him, we begin to feel with Him. And I might get into some of that in a deeper sense this morning. What it means to walk with Jesus. But not to uh, give the invitation in a sense of a, uh, a fearful thing. But to give the invitation as God, with a very peaceful voice, saying unto us, Come, would you walk with me? Um, that is a very real challenge. Uh, I will tell you, as I have walked with Christ, it has not been easy. But I can say that it has been so fulfilling to realize what it means to walk with Jesus Christ. What that means. And that I get to stand or I get to walk and hold the hand of the one that has the answers to all of life's questions. Uh, the, the, any question that you can come up with this morning that causes you to sometimes doubt or fear. Jesus Christ has that answer. Every one of those questions, you can ask any question. Uh, Brother Jake was talking a little bit about where Jesus is standing before Pilate. And Pilate asked the question, what is truth? It was a question. Just like, are you washed in the blood? It's a question. And the interesting thing is, Pilate didn't wait around because I believe Jesus would have answered the question. I'll tell you what is truth. And he would have told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's me. And so, I uh, want to give the invitation this morning, the last invitation given in Revelation. Um, and it's, it's, an, it's, a, it's a beautiful invitation because those of us on this side that have surrendered our life, we partake in giving the invitation, the church. It says here in Revelation chapter 22, verse 17, 
the spirit and the bride, which is the church, say come. And again, I want to say it this morning in a way of, this is not a threat. You better come or else. That's not what this is. Jesus is saying, come. Walk with me. And he doesn't say, you better walk with me. He says, just come. The spirit and the bride say, come. And to him that heareth say, come. And to the one that is thirsty, come. Three invitations. Three times. Just come. You know, like there in the beginning when God said, let there be light. I want you to see those two or that word. I'll, I'll just use the one word, let. It, it, God is saying, light come forth. Let it be light. And then there was light. Here Jesus is saying, just come. And notice, he says, let him take the water of life freely. And I want to just focus in on this just a little bit. Remember I said to walk with Christ is not an easy walk in the park. Um, I've walked this narrow way and I've come so close to the edge of darkness. Uh, I could feel the darkness. That's how close this narrow way where I was walking brought me to. You might say that doesn't make any sense. You're walking with Christ. When you walk with Christ, you will feel what He feels. You will endure what He endures. And the beauty in this is, there's a joy in that. And I can't even express joy this morning to the depth that joy is. When I cry tears of sorrow, in that sorrow, when I walk with Christ, there's a joy because I know this too shall come to pass. Now the one on the Broadway has no understanding of this pain and suffering that brings joy. They don't know. They have not entered into this thing called joy. This amazing reality that this too will come to pass. And then we will be in bliss. The Spirit and the Bride say come. And to him that heareth say come. And to the one that is thirsty, notice, there has to be a desire for a drink. There, there has to be a longing for, Lord, I am thirsty. That one says, come. And then that one that has this thirst of the water of life, get this, we, we take and drink it in freely. Let him take the water of life freely. Now these are beautiful words out of the word of God. And uh, I point to the question of the song, Are You Washed in the Blood? And in that question, you yourself can answer. I will not answer for you. Christ asked the question, Have you accepted me? Are you walking with me? And like I said, on this narrow way that I've been on, I've come so close that I could feel darkness. But I never entered into it. As I walked the narrow way, Christ kept me from falling into the darkness. And he said, here, let's walk in the light. And the song also asked, are you walking daily with the Lord? I can tell you this morning, there's many times I don't feel like I'm walking with Him daily. Now I'm not saying that to say I allow sin to enter into my life and let sin take and do whatever it wants to do with me. That's not what I'm saying. I want to share a little bit on doubt. I want you to entertain the thought of doubt for a moment. When the Word of God says something, and you know it's real. 
Because you've experienced the goodness of God. But then something happens in your life and you're like, I doubt right now. I've got a lot of fear going on. Because there's a reality within my life. The physical seems more real right now than the, than the spiritual. I cannot hold on to spiritual because the physical is trying to overtake the spiritual. And I'm not talking about sin. That's not what I'm talking about. Just circumstances in life that you're like, I don't understand, Lord. And I've preached on that where our faith must come to a place where we trust. But what if our faith comes to a place of trust? Now I'm trusting. And as I'm trusting, I don't understand and I let go of trust. Then I hold on to faith. And you might think I'm going in circles and sometimes I am. But as sure as I stand here this morning... I will not, by the grace of God, let go of his hand. I will hold on to faith. Till my dying breath, that is the will of God. That is my surrendered will to him. I want to do that till the end of my journey. I chose a message this morning and I titled it, Jesus the Christ. And I did that on Thursday. <clears throat> I had no clue what was coming Thursday night to Friday. I had no clue what was coming. I spoke with Brother John. He's in Arizona trying to get a, tr a load back. He was going to come and preach this morning. He said, my load is taking me further away so I won't make it home for the weekend. Would you share the message Sunday? I said, sure I will. And for whatever reason, I wake up early in the morning and these words are on my mind. Jesus the Christ. And I began to entertain. What does that mean? Jesus the Christ. And I came to repeat that and repeat that. And what I came to was, Jesus became flesh and blood. He's human. I could hold on to him with my physical being, just as Jesus said, come, hold me. I could hold on to him. But then when my temporal ends up in a place of untrust, where faith has left me, then Jesus comes in and says, walk with me spiritually. By the grace of God. So I gave the title of the message, Jesus the Christ. He's physical. He's spiritual. He is all in all. And Paul preaches, he says, I'm going to keep preaching Christ till everyone sees that Christ is all in all. That's the direction of Paul's life. He says, I'm going to preach Christ in all so that all will be in Christ. It's in Colossians. And we could go through the uh, words of Colossians where we see that, that the, the cross took out everything against us. It blotted out what I had done against God and took it out of the way. It says it blotted it out. I want to share a little bit about blotting out. It's so far from being there that it is as it never was. This is what he did when he went to the cross. He nailed everything that was contrary to you and me. And he took it out of the way as if it never was. That's my hope this morning. When I walk the narrow way and I end up in a place I'm so close that I can touch and feel the darkness... Christ said, I took that out of the way. I'm walking with you. You're walking with me. If you'll turn to Matthew, we're going to be just in, I believe, just in the book of Matthew. I'm not sure. We, no, we'll, we'll just stay in the book of Matthew this morning. We're going to be in chapter 7 and chapter 8. But I want you to turn to chapter 8 first. And I want you to see a very simple scene of Jesus. And I want you to just see Jesus as he is, as he was when he had the ministry of healing as he walked the earth. This is what Jesus did. He walked and everyone that came to him, everyone that he came to, he would heal them. And it didn't matter what the disease was. If a man was demon-possessed, Jesus would heal that man. If a man had leprosy, Jesus would heal that man. 
Here he is in Matthew chapter 8. And he ends up at the Apostle Peter's house. And the Apostle Peter's mother-in-law is sick with a fever. Notice in verse 16 of chapter 8 in Matthew. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many... Back up a little, a couple of verses here. Sorry. Verse 14 through 15. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick on a, of a fever. And he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto them. I want you to just think about this for a little bit. Just, just look at the picture here. Who of us doesn't understand what fever does? Every part of your body aches, you can't move. And she's laying there like that. And Christ comes and all he does is touch her hand. From what I'm reading here, he never spoke a word. He just touched her. And the moment he touched her, she's well, she gets up. And then she ministers unto them. This is Jesus the Christ. This is who he is. This is the person Christ. This is the one that we again and again sing unto, the one that we meet in, in the church and say, this is Jesus, this is who He is. Notice, verse 16, When the even was come, the evening had come, they brought unto Him many that were possessed with devils, and He cast out the spirits with His word. Now He speaks the word, and the, the demon possessed are set free with the word of His mouth. Is this boring to you? I'm going to stop right there. Is this an old story to you? We've heard it so many times. It goes in one ear and out the other because we cannot. We have decided, yep, Jesus did that. I don't know what he does today. I am telling us, this is Jesus the Christ. It says... With his word, he cast out demons and he healed all that were sick. In that area, everyone that came to him, he healed. Everyone. Now, if you'll go through a little further into chapter 8, verse 23. I'm going to pick it up there. Chapter 8, verse 23. Jesus has left. There are those that had said to him, I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to do all these things. I'm going to be faithful to you. I'm going to do everything that you're going to ask me to do. But I first have these other things that I want to do. And then Jesus leaves them. And it says, And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, lest we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose, and he rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great calm, verse 27. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? That's as far as I'm going to read. I want you to notice something in verse 23. When I saw this, it, it got right into my heart, very personal. I want you to notice this. It says, and when he was entered into a ship, that became personal to me this week. I've been on the Sea of Galilee. And in the Sea of Galilee, as I see it, it's the world. At a moment's notice, there's a major tempest. There, there's storms brewing and you get cast to and fro. And I couldn't understand which way to go. But when I saw this, that Jesus entered into the ship, that means Jesus entered into my life so that when the storms came, I could deal with them. Go down. A little further. Verse 25. And his disciples came to him and awoke him saying, Lord, save us. This was my prayer this week. 
Thursday night, around 10.30, we finally get a call. Our daughter had had her child. 10.30, we speak to mom, we hear the baby crying, dad's okay, everyone's good, right? I had no clue what was coming. And around a few moments before midnight, we get a text that, I don't know what's happening, she's not doing good, I'm worried. And we tried to text back and we're trying to figure out who's not doing good. The baby's a girl, our daughter, which one's not doing good? We get a text back, Tina's not doing well. And we waited. We have their children at home, didn't know, should we take the children? Should we go with, take them with to the hospital? Should, what should we do? And my wife and I decided I should go. She would stay home with the children. And on the way to the hospital, this was my prayer. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Have you... And I want to speak to the single parents a little bit here this morning. Any one of us that knows a single parent, I want you to bless them. I want you to comfort them. Because they are taking up a task that was never, that was never theirs to walk. That's why I say this morning, when you see Jesus in His fullness, what He does, and praise God this morning, family as well, but I looked into the, man of, the eyes of a man that said, without saying anything, what am I going to do? I leave the hospital with my newborn baby, and I leave my wife behind and plan for a funeral. What am I going to do? I saw that. To the point that the, the winds and waves are so high, the little ship is going under. I don't know if you've been there. Where you let go and you believe without understanding what faith is. Knowing how good God is. I said to my son-in-law, when I got there, how is it? How serious is it? He moved back and forth, he looked to the ground, he looked up, he looked all over the place trying to answer how bad is it, and he said, I, I could lose her at any minute. And like I said, praise God, she's okay this morning, but there are those that have left their loved ones behind. They sit here this morning, they know what it's like, and I stand here, and I'm blessed with another grandchild. Mom and dad are okay. But have we looked into what that's like? Like I said, when I walk the narrow way, I get so close to the edge of darkness, I can feel what this is like. In the ER room... The doctor who performed the delivery, she backed away from there and she looked at me and she said, by everything I've experienced today, I know one thing for sure. I'm not a religious person, but I know one thing for sure. There is a higher power. I don't know what he is, who he is, but there is a higher power than what I believed before. And I began to pull back from that. And I was like, what is God doing by the suffering? And this is so, so important to understand that in the suffering, God has a plan. That He would turn people's hearts to Him so they can see that the goodness of God is alive and well. But what do I say to the one that never made it home? What, what, what do we say to them? Do we say God is still good? Do we say that God is care caring for you? God is comforting you? What do you say to them? There are few that understand the love of God in that place, in that understanding, 
And then be able to walk with joy. There are a few that understand that. I believe most people, when they enter into that type of suffering, they choose to rebel. They choose anger. They choose confusion because they don't know. And I stand here this morning and I say, I understand why they would do that. Because as you see this, the reality of loving God does not just come easy. It's a choice. But it's an amazing, beautiful choice to make. And I would say it like this this morning. When we suffer and we stand with someone that suffers, or we sit beside them, we weep with them, maybe we don't say anything. Maybe we're just there. Let them speak. Maybe they can't speak. And that's okay. So as I looked at that, I still want to preach the good news. I still want to give the invitation. And I want to go to Matthew chapter 7 right now. And I want to give the invitation. I want to give it in this sense. I want to give it in a sense of, come with me, says Jesus. Not in a way of trying to scare you into the kingdom of God. So many, I believe, they got to this place and they felt threatened. The preacher would preach and say, if you don't do this, then this is what's going to happen. I don't want to give it like that. I want to give it in a sense as Jesus would give. The kind and compassionate person that he is. Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 through 14. And verse 12, first Jesus gives this amazing, it's, it's the golden rule. Whatever you would want men to do unto you, do that to them. For on this, or in this, the law and the prophets hang. Everything is hinged on, if you want to do good, or if you want men to do good, do good to them. It says here, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Now, verse 13 and 14. I want you to hear this, but not in a condemning or a forceful or fearful way. As an invitation of Jesus saying with the goodness that he has and the goodness that he has come. I want you to come. I want you to walk with me. And then, then you can walk with someone. And then as they hurt, you can hurt with them. And as they enter into a place of doubt, you can encourage them. And as they lose a loved one, you can cry with, you can weep with them. And know that this too will come to pass and then we will be with him. Listen. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Verse 14, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it. Listen to the words of Jesus. He gives the invitation. As soon as he gives the invitation, he says, enter into the narrow gate. Enter in at the narrow gate. And then he points to the wide gate. Then he says, on this wide, this, this wide gate, you know what it's going to do? It's going to lead to a broad way that leadeth to destruction. It destroys. And Jesus says, I'm not walking there. That wide gate and that broad way, I'm not walking there. That's not where I am. He's saying, don't walk there. And he's saying, just come over here. Come back to the straight gate. And then in this straight gate is a narrow way. But in this straight and narrow way is life. And he says, which leadeth unto life and few be there that find it. Why is he saying that? I want to share with you this morning what I believe he is saying. Because he is Jesus the Christ. He's talking temporal. He's speaking eternal also. 
There are so very few people that I believe find this beautiful way of life in the kingdom of God on this side of eternity where we actually live by what Jesus had just said. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would, that men should do to you, do ye to them in verse 12. That's your guidance for this side to live that way. Jesus has the answers for this life and the life hereafter. But here he is saying, enter ye in at the straight gate. He has just told us, this is what you should do in this life. But if you choose the other way, he says, it's going to lead to destruction. If you're going to go through the, broad, the wide gate and the broad way, it's going to lead to destruction. It will destroy you. And then he says, I don't want you to have to go through that. Who of you has ever met someone that has entered in at the wide gate, the broad way, and he's living that life? Who of you hasn't seen a person like that? And it's destroying them. Because they don't understand forgiveness. They don't understand the love of God. They don't understand what it means to truly love their another. To give their life for another. They don't understand that. And they're walking this way. At the end of that journey, it destroys them. And then Jesus goes back and he says in verse 14. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. My prayer is this morning for us as a church. That we would enter into this relationship with Christ to walk the straight and narrow way. To understand what that means. To be a servant from the heart. To give from my time to another to embrace them. I'm going to go back to the single parent home for a little bit. I don't know what the numbers are in America. But you know how many families... Or children suffer because it's a single parent home. And I'm not saying it in the sense of that all is lost. What I'm saying is God has not designed it that way. That was not God's plan. Before sin entered, that was not His plan. But in this amazing person of Christ, we are called to be that mouth, to be the hands, to be the feet for the single parent home. To bless them. And like I said, when I saw that in my son-in-law... To experience letting go, leaving behind, and then entering into a life without my partner. It broke his heart. So with that, I'm going to close here. And what I want to say is, just as Paul said, we want to preach Christ and we want to preach Christ until Christ is all in all. And I uh, also want to just say that part of what I'm seeing, what, what I realized in this past week was coming back from the, from the hospital, the thankfulness, the gratitude of God's work. There are things that God does behind the scenes we'll never understand and that's okay. But there are things that God does that I can put my hands on and I'm like, God, you are amazing. You are, you're, you're an amazing cre creator. I spoke to the, the doctor. I said, you know what? Not only is there someone or something bigger, there is someone that is very detailed, organized, and loving and kind that we yet will see one day as he is. And she, she pulled back from that and she's like, by everything I've seen, there has to be something more. And so, I want to close with, with some words. We sang it here, a song uh, that we sang here some time ago. Uh, I believe it was on a Thursday evening. And, and the song is called The Plan of Salvation. And I want you to just hear this. The beauty in this. Whoever wrote this, they must have been at a place. And they also went through trials and tribulation. Might have been on the Sea of Galilee as we are often. Tossed to and fro and don't know which way to go and confused and then we get to see that Jesus enters into my life he steps into my little sailboat and he calms the waters and as he calls out be still the storms dropped and there was a great calm it says just think into that listen to the words of this song I want to thank Jesus 
for the plan of salvation. Just to say, Lord, I love you, for you understand. I want to be there on that great judgment morning to touch the nail prints in his feet and his hands. One morning at daybreak, a crowd slowly gathered. They were walking my Lord up old Calvary's hill. So sad was the scene there, the birds hushed their singing. Like a lamb, he was humble to his father's own will. As the hill was ascended, the nails were then driven in the hands that he had given such mercy to me. And the blood from his side flowed like a river from heaven, a river that washed me and made my soul clean. On the cross, as he hung there, in shame and forsaken, as the, they drove those crude nails in his feet and his hands, in his eyes closed in death, his cry went to heaven, saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I want to thank Jesus. I want to thank Jesus for the plan of salvation. I don't know where you're at this morning. I don't know if you've ever walked with him. I don't know if you're walking with him now. I don't know if you want to walk with him. But I thank him for that. Every place that he's led me every place, everything that he's done in my life all I can say at the end of the journey he entered into my little vessel and showed me we're going to get across the Sea of Galilee and we're going to be safely on the other side where he, where he just calms the waters and we enter into that life of truth where we will no longer doubt and fear so with that if you could stand we'll have a word of prayer I want to thank you for being patient this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you love us. We can't even put it in words. We, we can't even begin to reach into the depth of your love. We, we see it around us all over, but as we entertain it, it gets deeper. And the deeper it gets, the more love is there, Lord. And I ask that you bless those that have come out this morning. We want to pray for the single parents this morning. As I looked into that through my son-in-law's eyes, I saw a fear. I saw a hurt that I'd never seen before in that depth. To understand what it means to try to raise a family on my own, Lord. It is not your plan, Lord. But there are those that are trying to do that. So we ask that you bless those this morning. Help us to be the hands and feet of Jesus for those individuals. We also ask, Lord, that you bless those that have never walked with you. We ask, Lord, that they would enter in at the straight gate and walk the narrow way and understand that the broad way leads to destruction. It's death. It's, it's destroying that we would understand that and we could walk in truth, Lord. We ask, Lord, also that you bless each one that's come out. We ask that you bless your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated.
so, <clears throat> excuse me. So I want to close here. Excuse my voice. I want to close here with giving the invitation. If you're not walking with Christ, or if you've not given your life over to Christ, today is the day. It's right now. Not tomorrow. Not in a couple of weeks. Not until I get it figured out. Not until I've done less sinning. Not then. Right now. Today. And I want to tell you, how beautiful and simple it is. You know the words of Jesus, enter ye in. You know why he said it? Because you can do it. I, with a simple prayer, and I didn't have it figured out, by no means, I don't have it figured out today. But by a simple prayer, Lord, if you can use this vessel, would you take me? That's my prayer. Just like that prayer when I was heading to the hospital. Lord, help us. Three words. If you don't know Jesus, get to know him today. You can do it today. Don't wait. If there's anyone within the sound of my voice that wants to get to know Jesus, doesn't know Jesus, maybe you have some things in your life, anything today, I ask you. With that, if you'll stand, we'll have the benediction. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do His will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in His sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. You are free to go.